So let's get started with entering the employee related data, which is the names of the employees and also when they started joining the, uh, join the company and also when they left the company, if they have left. So let's enter them in a table. So we will enter the employee data in a new sheet. So I'm going to click on this plus sign or you can just do right click and then do insert a new sheet. But we have to name this employees because we're going to start putting employee data. And one thing you have to remember is that we could keep entering all the input information in the same sheet. But I generally prefer um, if we have multiple expanding tables. So expanding table means this table of holidays. We don't know how many because it could be 10 for a company. We also want to make sure that this template can be used for many years. So over the number of years, it may be 100 days, which could be a holidays. So we don't want to actually uh, add more and more tables to this sheet because we don't want two tables to overlap. We cannot have that. So that's the reason why I prefer to put them in a separate sheet. Another reason why I prefer to put them in a different sheet is usually these settings can be uh, done you know, once, maybe once a year or something. We don't need to come and change the weekends every time, right, as a, as a user of the template. So, but the employee data can change more frequently. So employees may leave at any time, employees, new employees may join at any time. So we want that to be a more frequently accessed input sheet. So that's why I like keeping them separate. So we create a new sheet called employees. And now we're going to start typing in the data we want to store, employee name, we want to know when the employee started. We want to know when the employee ended, uh, if in case they have terminated their employment. Uh, and also, you know, we could have more columns about the employee. So I'm just going to use department as one example. Um, select these columns and double click so that they expand in width. Now I'm going to, just like all Excel tables, we're going to enter a few examples. So I'm just going to keep the naming to be very basic and um, I'm gonna enter maybe three or four employees and um, Excel also will support, for example, if I drag it in, it's gonna number them because it knows that it's a series, so it'll start populating it for us. And I'm going to say this employee is still working with us and another employee who started in 2017, still working with us. And then this employee also started in May, but to 2018 and is still with us. Okay, now this is our table, just like always, we have select all the cells, press control T, create the table. And now the table name, we want to name it as T underscore EMP. Um, this is going to be the table of employees. So, so we're going to name it as T underscore EMP. Another thing we want to do it here is that we want the list of employees again to have its own unique name. Um, so the table is T underscore EMP, but this name uh, of employee names list, I'm going to name it again as L underscore EMP. So T for table, L for list. That's just my naming convention, which works for me. Uh, I would also recommend you so that uh, you are always able to distinguish between which ones are tables, which ones are lists, and which ones are other types of entries and names that we will see later. But it, it just keeps it um, easier and simpler to follow along. So now we have created a table of employees. We have named it and all that. That's great. Now, another um, part of the data is the date type of information. So I want to make sure that um, when you're building a global um, uh, solution, meaning you're building something where the audience could be from any uh, part of the world, then I always uh, recommend not to use this standard format. Uh, I'm here recording this in the US, so it's basically month, day, and then year. But there are many countries in the world where this, the first one is actually the date and not day, not the month. So this could be interpreted as uh, by many people as um, 1st of June 2015, but it's actually 6th of January. So I want to make sure that this is um, correctly interpreted by the user. So what I would like to um, usually do is to go to the formatting. So press control one. This is another important shortcut that you will definitely use often is to bring up this format cells dialog box. So control one for format cells. 
um, whatever cells you have selected now you can actually change the format so I'm gonna press date for example you see that this is kind of the date format but then go to custom because here you can make it anything you want so I like to do um, for example um, dd hyphen mmm hyphen y y y y so date month and year i do mmm this this makes sure that the month is spelled out because jan would, would make it very clear and without any confusion rather than month number one so mmm is january dd is for the date it'll always have a zero so if it has a if it's just six it'll put zero six and uh, and if it's 13 it'll do one three so we want to make sure that the two digits there press ok and now you see that the dates are much uh, easier uh, and less confusing to follow along. Last thing on this video would be, we'll just change the table you know, formatting just to be consistent and use the same approach as we did. Choose that, it's all clear. Now let's move to the next step.